Our work on Kennedy disease is trying to address the very early stages of this disease. Uh, Kennedy disease is a rare hereditary neurodegenerative disease that affects only men. It is due to mutations in the gene that encodes for a protein called androgen receptor. These mutations cause uh, the expansion of a region rich in glutamines, and when this region becomes longer than a given number of amino acids, uh, it renders the whole protein insoluble. And as far as we know, uh, it causes the aggregation of the protein, the abnormal aggregation of the protein in the nuclei of a type of cell called motor neurons that connects the central nervous system with muscles. And um, very little is known about what is the sequence of events that leads to aggregation. And the goal of the project is to try to understand in as much as we can this detailed mechanism, both in vitro, in the lab, and also in vivo, in uh, Drosophila. This is a very uh, nice collaboration between three different groups uh, that we coordinate with funding from Marato da TVTS. The groups involved are my own group, then a group at an institute in Barcelona called IBUP, Institute de Biomedicina de la Universidad de Barcelona, that is led by Eva Estevenez Perpiña, who is uh, actually expert in the structure and interactions of this protein uh, androgen receptor in the context of prostate cancer. There's another group involved that is at the University of Cambridge, led by uh, the researcher Leila Luheshi, whom I used to work with when I was in Cambridge, that uh, is also part of the project. And her role is to actually uh, develop, hopefully develop the phenotype of the disease in Drosophila. So we can actually validate the findings that we have in the lab, in vitro, also in vivo. It's a very, uh, it's a very promising approach to try to understand uh, the mechanism of several neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, basically, there are three reasons why we're doing this. The first one is that all these complex motions of domains relative to one another are, are very challenging to characterize. But in the last few years, there have been many developments in actually in the development of methodologies to allow to make to make this possible, including some work of our own. In addition to that, uh, even though protein aggregation is a very complex phenomenon, recent work in the last say 10 years has allowed us many groups, including some work of ours, to understand the basic principles that leads, that, that makes protein aggregate. And we think now the field is mature enough for us to start looking at specific complex diseases. And the third reason is that uh, this disease, Kennedy disease, is part of a family of diseases, all involving this expansion of the glutamine tracts in uh, proteins. The most famous one, or the best understood, being Huntington's disease. And they have, in the last months, I would say, year, even after we published, uh, we submitted our application to the Marato, there have been quite interesting biophysical work that has provided us with a very interesting hypothesis as to why aggregation in, in Kennedy disease occurs. So uh, I think it is particularly exciting time to start to address uh, SBMA, which is the technical word for uh, Kennedy disease. Really, really early, because we don't know, we don't know yet what makes pro uh, androgen receptor aggregate one it is in the nucleus. So, we are just trying to understand the main chain of events that leads to aggregation. Once we have reached our goals, hopefully within the next few years, then we'll be at the stage where we can start to design drugs potentially to prevent the process. But at this, at this stage, uh, what we want to know is what occurs rather than interfering with it. This will be another project for someone else maybe. What makes, I think, IRB unique is that, and what makes it especially interesting for a group like mine, trying to work on this project, is that it combines in a single setting groups that work on many different research lines, all connected to what we do. There are groups working with neurodegenerative disease, there are, works, there are groups working on computational methods, such as the ones that we develop. We can very easily find colleagues very nearby in the Institute which can help us develop the tools that we need to develop to, to answer the questions. The reason I left is because uh, as part of my training it is indispensable to be exposed to different areas of research, different tools and different groups. I, so I went to spend many years, uh, in fact almost six years, in one of the leading groups working in the understanding of protein dynamics or macromolecular dynamics in general, but also in the uh, rationalization of the mechanism of protein aggregation by using a very multidisciplinary approach. I learned a lot there. Um, I didn't know what I would do with my career, but then uh, I realized that 
while I had been away. There had been a, a very profound transformation of the research system in Catalonia that made it possible for young scientists such as myself, not extremely experienced, to become independent and to be, to be well-funded in centers of excellence which have the critical mass that is necessary to make a difference at an international level. And, and uh, as, I, as I realized that this was possible, I, uh, I thought it would be potentially a good idea uh, that Spain would become, in Barcelona in particular, a good place for me to become an independent researcher. So I took the opportunity.